Hello guys, I'm Orbeta, your Welsh engineer, and welcome back to Lathe or Bust Part 2. It's a journey. It's a journey to another world, <laughs> into another system, and it's the first time that uh, our Kerbal is going to head plant their faces into the ground. But hopefully not at hyper velocities. Anyway, let's get with the launches. This is the first launch. This is the return from Jewel Craft. In other words, this will be in orbit around Lathe. They'll launch and they'll all gather on this and then return all in one go. If it's enough room. I think they've got enough room in this for nine Kerbals for a turn safely. I added extra parachutes to this because I'm sure that this design does not have enough parachutes when entering the Kerbin's atmosphere. Anyway, that aside, this has got definitely enough Delta V to get to Lathe. Normally what I'd do, I'd launch this up into orbit and then dock another unit or craft on the back end of this. But because getting into Lathe orbit takes a lot more Delta V, that means we're going to have to save as much as possible. You can see I'm transferring fuel from the back end rocket to the, uh, the craft rocket engines, the outer rocket engines. That's because... Well, we're trying to save as much Delta V, and yes, you can see here I'm dipping back into the atmosphere on our way to Duel. That can be helped, but hey, it was only a small dip and it didn't cost that much extra Delta V. Now for the long journey ahead towards Duel. This takes ages, even moves in the hyper, edit, uh, hyper speed mod because you have to do some jiggery pokery. The frame rate for this, I think, dipped down to 7 frames per second at points, and that's because uh, this was a large craft, and I think I've got loads of craft around the system, which means it's going to be taxing on my CPU. And I think this one took an hour and a half, especially with the jiggery and pokery with the uh, Medova nodes, and that was because I was having multiple encounters with the moons, and I was trying to avoid them, because all I want to do is get into a highly elliptical orbit, and then the plan is to raise your orbit that to that the height of lathe and then use that create a maneuver node it also didn't help that we weren't in the correct plane for getting into an equatorial orbit of a uh, lathe so that had to be altered and as you can see when i'm adding a maneuver node the orbit seemed to change and that was because of multiple encounters with the moon i'm not sure why that would cause a problem but it meant I have to go back and forth creating maneuver nodes. But then, once that was done, we could get our Kerbals into orbit. And as requested, some of your Kerbals have been entered onto this mission. You may have already noticed your Kerbal names on there already. But on here we got Nikoloski and Jeremy Kerman. Don't worry, other Kerbals will be added in on the other missions that we have sent in here. And I was curious, once we got here, the one thing I haven't tried was to see if you could see the Kerbal's reflection in the new Ultimate Textures mod, where you can make the craft all nice and shiny. But checking here and there, no, we couldn't. So that was a shame. It looks like it only reflects the environment, the planets, and uh, the star field, probably. So with that aside, let's leave these two Kerbals in orbit and send our next mission. Obviously the next one if, is the return craft. The first mission we sent was the return mission. That means that we can send Kerbals back if something fails. The second one is the return, the launch into orbit from lathe craft. And that's because if this crashes, it's not worth sending anything else because they'll they won't be able to return from lathe. Uh, yeah, we have Kerbals on here and if they crash and they burn and they die, it's a shame. <laughs> but I'm sure you trust me with your Kerbal lives. And you may have noticed that this launcher was quite huge. It had multiple, multiple boosters. And that was because this craft is full of fuel. It has jet engines and whatnot, all the mod cons, including cup holders. Oh yes, it has cup holders. It's so advanced. Anyway, let's get these Kerbals on the way to Jewel. As always, we do the launch, we do the transfer. By your most, I'm going to cut out most of the getting into orbit stuff because you've seen it mostly. We get to Jewel, we orientate ourselves to get us into a highly elliptical orbit, and then we get an encounter with Lathe, then we get into a Lathe low orbit. Simples. And yes, I've done this without gravity slingshots, so that's why these all these rockets are huge. But now for the moment of truth. 
the one bit I've been dreading is re-entry of all the craft. Okay, I think this one is the one that would survive if any of them do. The jet that we're going to be sending next, I'm not too sure. And the spider rover, which I've now got working, that'll float on top of the oceans with its wheels, because I installed Tweak Scale mod. That is the one I think may fail, because I want to deorbit that and then use the rockets to slow it down enough so that it doesn't burn up in the atmosphere. I'm not sure how that's going to work, if it is going to work. But one step at a time, let's see if these Kerbals survive. So far, so good. Now the problem with this is that once this is entering the atmosphere, because it's slight variations in the direction that it's going, you see it lifts off course and then suddenly the pylons and everything get into the atmosphere, which then you get atmospheric heating, and normally the parachutes were the first things to go. That's why I've added the wings on this, to try to stabilize it. And a bit of rotation never hurts anyone. Uh, it may make the Kerbals go green, but I don't think they mind too much. <laughs> Mainly because they're already green, but uh, I'm sure there's some other reasons why they don't like <laughs> becoming sick. Possibly because they, if they throw up, where are they going to put it? It's going to be on the deck, even if they clean it up properly. Is smell is going to be there for months on end, especially since this is going to take at least a year before they can do a return trip. Oh yes, one year with three Kerbals. Okay, we survived the entry, let's detach the heat shields. Okay, everything's going according to plan. Now the last bit is, I've done some testing on Kerbin and we're traveling at 12 meters per second. I think the landing legs can survive seven meters per second and they're quite close to the engines. The engines could explode if the landing legs give way. So we have to engage the engines, bring ourselves just under seven meters per second. And well, we survived, but <laughs> we tipped over. Okay, confession here. I did everything I could. I switch engines on and off, tried to flip it over, but nothing worked. So I used the place move vessel mod. Now I placed it in the exact same place that I landed. And if it tipped over, I would accept that we landed on a slope and we'd have to send another rescue mission. So yes, I cheated by there. Anyway, let's get the Kerbals face planting headfirst into, into the planet. Sorry, I meant moon. But who have we got here? The Great Wolf 909 is the first Kerbal to plant his face into the surface of the planet. Next we have Chris Kerman, he too plants his face into the surface and walks backwards. <laughs> Does a moon walk? Yeah, because we're on a moon. And lastly we have Cretan Crawford Kerman. Uh, oops. <laughs> okay, second bit of cheating. I do a quick load get all the Kerbals off in one go, make sure they don't explode, that was not intended. Normally Kerbals survive height from that height, but I think because I've removed his helmet, do they, their heads quite delicate, they're quite large, I think the, the that's why they got huge helmets, is to make sure that they survive any falls. Because normally, sometimes you can drop them from great heights and they just bounce. Anyway, they survived. Any news that the Kerbals died was uh, greatly exaggerated. <laughs> and now we are launching the, uh, what I forgot what it called it in fact. The Jewel, uh, the Lay Flyer? I think I called it the Lay Flyer. I should have come up with a better name. Perhaps you guys could tell me a name. I could rename the craft while we're there. So yeah, if you've got a name for this craft, let me know. Otherwise it'll just be left as the Lay Flyer. Okay, so now we have to get this to enter the atmosphere. And you can see he's got four, mm, four inflatable heat shields. Now the problem with heat shields, the inflatable ones especially, is they have to flip the craft out. Now I'm sure I tested this and it worked great. But what I've done is I've bled off as much velocity with the rocket as possible. As you can see we've used the entire rocket app and still we flip out. But like we, low velocity, 
Will we survive? Yes, the craft is tumbling out of control, and I'm trying to rotate it to try to get make sure that the heat is evenly spread across the craft. Luckily, most space plane parts are highly resilient to re-entry, and also, um, I think the girders are quite resilient, and we don't have parachutes on here to explode. Uh, except those, the heat shields. Jets in them, especially when they clip in each other. And also, I had a problem where I had to reload at one point, because it, the heat shield destroyed Mech Jeb. How dare it! Now, I'm planning on using Mech Jeb because I can set up an autom the automatic flight pilot to make sure it keeps on course. Especially when I'm trying to run with, say, like, Kerbals over there. And also, you may think that the jet has only one function as to fly around. No, it doesn't. In fact, the Kerbal can detach the explosives that are lined on the bottom of the craft. They can take off again, set a timer is included with the explosives, and then it can detect the explosion and measure the, uh, uh, I don't know, explosions. <laughs> it can measure explosions, determine what the ground is made of, of and help determine what's in the center of this planet. Is it all ocean? How deep does the ocean go? And how is there any alien life under there? Anyway, I decided by here, going over there is going to take too long. This include all the recordings. That's just the recordings took me four hours in total during the week. And then obviously an hour or so editing, picking music and inserting my voice somehow on over this video. And I find that uh, Dodo, Western Dodo, why are you sitting in the crew cabin and not in the pilot seat? I request why. I thought you were the one flying this. Obviously not. <laughs> anyway, join me in the next episode where we'll be flying this. The Spider Rover, which can not only go on land at high velocities, but can also skip over the water like some spiders can. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode, and doing some science, I suppose. The only thing that can go wrong is the uh, spider over and these two kerbals, as you can see by there, will explode on entry, entry into lathe. So join me. What's going to happen? Are they going to survive or not in the next episode?